Okay, look, I know what I said. I'm not gonna buy the new Axis, so here's, so SRAM's about to drop their new drivetrain, and um, honestly, I, all I really wanted out of that was the cassette, and I'm sure it's gonna be 450 bucks for an XX1, but. I didn't think Axis was for me, but hear me out. Sometimes the phone rings, and you gotta answer it. I need Nas. I need Nas. You'll blow yourself to pieces. I need one of these. One of the big ones. But actually, you know, let's make it two. And Ari, I need it by tonight. So, forget everything I've said before, and let's check out this new SRAM Axis transmission. And as always, shout out to Tribal Gear San Diego, always representing Silk Cloud. Use code DUSTINJ at checkout, 20% off. Shout out to Isaac. So, the reason why I've been pretty reluctant to accept the electronic drivetrains is, I don't know, I like the simplicity of cable. And honestly, to me, the old Axis kind of felt like, kind of felt like they just took the original Eagle cable and then just kind of slapped a battery on it, made it look super ugly, and gave you an electronic controller and called it good. And I also don't love the idea of having to charge my batteries. I have forgotten some in the past, but you know, it's something I can get over if, if the product is right. And if the product is really a truly a game changer, um, this stuff just came out. I'm kind of letting, I, I kind of waited and I wanted to let some of the videos uh, pop up so I can kind of get an idea of what's going on, but I still don't know too much about it. So if you guys want more like in-depth views on stuff like that, there's tons of other videos on YouTube. This is more just me, my thoughts. You guys know I've had a really love-hate relationship with Axis. Um, I think it's great, um, but it's just, to me, the, the old stuff wasn't better than cable. The chain slap on the old stuff was really the, the nail in the coffin for me of why I just really gave up on it. Just felt rushed. It's the only way I can put it. Just felt rushed. It, it wasn't very attractive looking. Just bulky. Uh, the derailleur sticked out super far. And you guys can go watch all those videos on on my opinions on the original stuff. But um, we're gonna get into this. Um, Bauhaus Bikes gave me a call and said, "Hey, we have an XX transmission with your name on it. If you want it." And uh, full disclosure. I am going to be working with them now, doing an ambassadorship, and uh, so anything you guys need from them, tell them Dustin sent you. Go see Thomas and Jason, they're the best in town, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into this video and uh, put this new stuff on my bike. Finally, thank you. SRAM gods, I've been waiting for this piece right here. This is the part of the transmission that I've been most excited about. Um, is the new gear ratio on this cassette. I just really did not like the old gear ratio on the old Eagle stuff. Um, that 42 to 52 jump right at the end of this cassette just never felt like uh, it was totally useful. Um, it just didn't feel, it felt rushed as well. It felt like when they came out with Eagle, they just took the original cassette that we've all been using for years and slapped a big 52 on the end of it and Honestly, in my opinion, that was kind of a mistake, and I'm glad that they fixed that. It should, when you're adding another gear, in my opinion, you should rearrange the whole cassette. So, I really like what I see here. Um, got a 38 up to a 44 and a 52. Perfect. Exactly what I've been wanting, and uh, that's going to allow me to run a bigger chain ring now. Um, cause then I'll be able to keep that same climbing cadence, but also gain a little bit of, uh, stuff on the down. So yeah, super excited for this cassette. Get this baby off here. Never mind that. That's the right way. Whew. Almost took my fingy off. One thing, I mean, right off the bat, here's what I noticed is it looks like the cassette is pushed out just a little bit. Um, farther than the older stuff and depth to super boost hell yeah uh, we were able to get the 55 millimeter chain line on a standard boost bike super stoked on that because super boost is annoying 
never taken one of these off before. Uh, oh, reverse thread. Hmm. Wonder if I need to keep these. This I don't. Got these new cranks, built-in bash guard, and also dub wide. Finally, I hope everyone just adopts dub wide and we call it good. No more freaking super boost, no more boost, whatever. Dub wide. Let's keep it this way. Uh, spacer wise, they give you all the spacers. Website says um, if you're putting a dub wide crank on a boost bike, um, that is press fit 92. You need a three mil spacer non drive and a five mil spacer, which is new on your drive side. So, with this new crank, I don't think I'm going to be able to run the uh, provided chain guide with my bike because, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it'll fit. So, I don't know what they're going to do with that. Um, I'm sure they'll eventually make like some type of guide that will keep the, in the inner part of the chain from falling off and then you can leave the bash guards on. I don't know. Let me know uh, if you guys have seen anything yet, but for now, I'm just going to take this thing off. Yep, that's about right. I will say, on the last axis, I really didn't love the controller. It just, the ergonomics never felt good to me. The original paddle was just kind of weird. They, they came out with that little adapter that you can use to have more of a, a paddle rather than a rocker. Um, but this one looks super sweet. Um, pretty adjustable in all the different ways that you can go with this thing. And yeah, so far I think that that part of this looks super good. Looks like you uh, just go ahead and move it right to where you want and then you tighten it down. It looks like it just pretty much tightens everything. Cable free. I like it. Uh, cool. Yeah, this, this new paddle shifter feels ergonomically, feels great. I think I'm gonna like this shifter a lot, controller, whatever you wanna call it. I wonder how this contraption gets on. I have to YouTube it. Charged. I still hate these things. All right. Power on. Green. Green means go. It's alive. Sick. And with the corresponding letter, A or B. Failure to position the setup key correctly will result in an inaccurate chain gap, poor shifting performance, and may even damage your derailleur and or bicycle frame. Press the top button on the controller to shift the derailleur. So apparently you have to get that right, and the score is not even on the website. Um, so it says for my chainstay length, three, uh, 433, that uh, it needs to go into the B setting, which it's already in. Sweet. I hope this works. So, uh, for my bike, according to the full suspension, chain stay, 433, chain is 116 links, um, supports a 32 or 34 chain ring. I also am going to run a 34 on this bike. Um, right now it's a 32, but I have a 34 in order. And setup cog is a uh, 21 tooth. Cool. Grease or debris. Install the bushing frame insert from the outside with the black side facing outwards into the hangerless interface. This is where it gets weird. That quarter turn, the full turn backwards thing is kind of odd. One thing I really like about this new transmission is the chain and how they give you um, a cutting device like uh, they give you right in here. Because I've always like sizing a chain has always been super confusing to me and every bike's different and they make it pretty simple on this, supposedly. Yes. Sick. Thank you. 116. Yes. That was a piece of cake. Flat top on the top, obviously. Duh. Also, one thing that's pretty rad about this. No freaking setup screws or B gaps. God, that's so cool. I did it. Thing about two key lines. I think that's it. I think it's about time I start using one of these. My first torque wrench. 35 newton meters. Let's see here. I don't know how to use this thing. That's it. 
So, yeah, I mean, compared to the old stuff, I guess you pull back and tighten. Yeah, so far I prefer this setup compared to the old axis, just in terms of setting it up. Cool. Also, one thing I should mention that I, as I've been watching these videos on uh, setting this stuff up is if you have a bike that has geo adjust like this one, I can do a long travel or a short travel version. You do have to repeat this whole process and do everything over again. But the setup on this thing has been super simple so far. So I didn't realize I haven't, I'm done. That was pretty easy. Uh, let's give her a go and see. So far, so good. Shit. I like it. Yeah, that was a piece of cake. Let's, uh, let's sit here and talk about it for a second. So that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm really impressed with the setup on this. It's actually, watching videos, I thought it might be a little bit more difficult than previous generations, but... That was a piece of cake, actually. And I love that SRAM did, um, took all these new steps to make sure it's just extremely simple. You put it in your bike, you tell them what bike you have, they tell you the exact settings. There's no high low limits, there's no beat tensions, and that's super killer. And I think that's a big win for this drivetrain. I think, um, to me, just my initial impressions of this, I think it is gonna be a game changer. Where I didn't think the last one, I didn't think it was. I didn't think that, um, honestly, I didn't really feel any performance difference. Yeah, it was nice and fast and crisp shifting, but so was the old cable stuff. And one thing that people were saying that it shifts a little bit slower um, than the previous generation ones. And the reasoning is for that, if you guys, I'm not going to get too into it, but this is probably going to take some getting used to. But if you're used to the old axis where you shift and it's just, it goes right into the next gear no matter what. And that's not necessarily good for your drivetrain, I wouldn't think. So this stuff, you'll shift and it'll wait for the proper time as that cassette's going around for that chain to move up to that next cog or move down. Um, I think it's more so on the way up than it is on the way down. But um, So there might be a little bit of a delay in the shifting and that might take some getting used to, but this, this drivetrain to me feels, you know, from the ground up, purpose built, um, transmission. I'm sure that's why they're calling it that. Yeah, to me, everything works together really well. To me, it, it, it feels like a, like a complete package where I think the previous generation Axis, I just didn't think it felt like a complete package. It just kind of felt like an add-on to me, like a, just chuck a battery on your derailleur and throw a controller on and, and you know, ditch the housing and cable and boom, you got an electronic drivetrain. And yeah, it was super cool. And it was novel and it was unique and different at the time. But for me, um, I don't know, it just, it felt rushed and it felt um, not purpose built. And this so far, the quality on it, that rear derailleur looks, it looks amazing. And I think what they did it right with putting a bash guard on there, making all the parts interchangeable if you do beat it up. I mean, that's an expensive derailleur. So um, the fact that it breaks down into so many parts that um, are interchangeable and can be uh, replaced. I think that's a big win. So, so far, I'm super excited. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. And we're gonna get out, do a ride impressions on this thing. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. We'll catch you later. Peace.